So hello guys, in this one I want to show you how I made this animation which are currently seeing on the screen in Blender. Uh, a lot of people ask me uh, how I made this project so I will show you the first part and I will break this down. Now I will say the main effect, the knitting effect is made uh, from a YouTube channel uh, from some guy. I'm not sure what his name is right now but I will link his uh, channel down in the description so you can check him out. And Without further ado, let's we'll just uh, hop right into Blender. So we're in this scene. Uh, I wanna make this tutorial into three parts. The first part is to make these uh, things. Uh, the second part is to make this thing that controls where the effect is happening. And the third part is to texture this, this object right here, uh, which will be interesting as well so let's start with the first one so as i play this animation if i unmute this and if i play this you can see some things are happening over here and these things if i zoom in you can see these things are actually the nits so they kind of sell this effect and basically it's really simple uh you just want to make a simple curve uh so you'll just add a bezier curve, move it over here. It doesn't have to be bezier, but I like to do bezier curves usually. So you will make a simple curve, something like this. Obviously you want to spend more time on this. Once you have this, uh, you want to go to geometry nodes and create this setup over here. So I will break this down real quick. Uh, so you will add set position. You can easily just screenshot this um and copy these settings you know nothing crazy going on right here if you add set position node then you want to offset it with some texture uh usually i use noise texture so i use noise noise texture and 4d uh if you have 4d you can animate the w value which is basically a seat so make sure you are in 4d uh connect your scene time over here and if you want to slow it down or speed it up you can just add your multiply and if we multiply this by 0 0.3 uh, then it's basically gonna divide uh, or slow down the animation and the last thing you want just want to mesh it so you will add curve to mesh you know it's a curve so you will mesh it and add your desired uh, profile curve and it's pretty much it you have these animations now obviously you want to do you want to duplicate them and change the seat you want to change the scale or change this, these values so it's a little bit random as you can see these things are kind of random and like i said uh, if you didn't understand and if i talked very fast uh on this breakdown of these nets you can just check out this this guy that made the tutorial possible, you can see it on the screen right now. But for now, let's just move to the second uh, second step. So once you've uh, did this animation, you have copied and make, made this kind of random. So you have something that looks like this. Now you want to do this on your desired object. So it's nothing hard so let me show you how so you will create your object that will control this effect right here so in this case it's plain so i have keyframed it over here and i added a keyframe over here so it moves up and so now if i go to geometry nodes you wanna you want to add your effector so you want to add this plane to this geometry nodes and i've done this over here and i grouped this because i will not explain this much right now so uh what i usually do is i have this screenshotted on my second monitor where whenever i'm doing this kind of growth animation or i'm controlling the distribution of the objects uh, on some other object which is uh, currently this uh, so i use the setup right here so i just copy this every time 
So make sure you screenshot this and copy this. And also what's very important, and if you have this map range, you can see if I move this into the positive values, you can see it's chaotic and the effect is reversed. So you can see wherever the plane is, the nits aren't. So you want to reverse it into your negative values so it looks right. Something like this. So let's just move out of this node group and as you can see this drives the scale so wherever the plane is the scale should be from 0 minus 0 0.1 to 0 0.6 uh, so you want to keep it as kind of this you want to experiment a bit and this goes into instances on points and if you don't know what this these kind of things do uh, it's very simple so if you have your geometry right here and you will add distribute points on faces it will distribute points on faces pretty self-explanatory so if i click here you have these kind of points or balls whatever you want to call it and this basically tells blender you know hey there's a point on face and just calculate it and once you have these points you want to turn these points uh, to be instances and the instance should be the object so as you can see you have created these nits so you want to group this into collection as you can see i have these called the nits and i've moved this over here so you will move your nits into this geometry node setup and connect it into instance and what that gonna do is blender is gonna recognize hey uh on these points right here let's add these nits this collection uh on these so basically this is an instance on points and these points are where it's gonna be displayed and that's gonna look like by default if you don't have this it's gonna look something like this it's gonna distribute on every single every single uh, point so that's why we have this kind of group right here which controls the scale and controls the distribution um, and that's pretty much it uh, like I said you want to experiment with these values uh, and you want to make sure these values are negative and you will come up with results uh, that looks something like this now you can also add some kind of rotation you know, not much to say about this one uh, just add your desired rotation scale math or whatever you want to use I usually use rotate uh, Euler because that's just what looks the best usually and Add some randomness to this and you have this kind of animation now to the third step which is materials and lighting uh, so now on to the third part so once you've made it this far you should have your animation ready which uh, looks something like this uh, but uh, there's still something missing and that is the texturing so I will cover that up uh, right now so as you can see, this is how it should look like. What you want to do is basically uh, make this part of the mesh disappear. And after the knitting has been done, uh, the material suddenly appears. And that just sells the effect of, uh, of this whole animation. So uh, this is pretty much a image texture of art. Uh, to break this down a little uh, nothing crazy going on right here but here the setup as you can see there's the image image texture we have uh, a letter r which i made in affinity designer nothing to complicate it over here but uh here's the effect uh, as you can see uh if you're following this tutorial uh, this is how it's going to look like for you probably and uh, this is how this is how it should look like so 
basically uh, this is nothing hard uh, let me show you how to make this so from scratch uh, I don't want to break this down because it's complicated so let me just uh, make this from scratch and you can follow along so let's just add a texture coordinate and we want to select uh, a factor uh, I don't know what your object is called but mine is called a factor and it's pretty much this object which controls where uh, the thing is done so you want to select you want to click on your material and drag your effector to here so you have your texture coordinate over here now connect the object uh, object to mix color uh, connect it into mapping this way you can control uh, where the texture coordinate actually is uh, you will understand uh, after a few steps so now let's just add a noise texture uh, add a color ramp i like to use a noise texture a lot because you can add some variation to this texture and you will see this in a bit but now this whole effect is done by gradient texture so you will add a gradient texture and a color ramp on top because i just like to use color ramp a lot and this gives you a way to uh, to further customize it and uh, you can see something is happening but you want to play with these values and this is what the mapping is here for because you can move this around as you can see now it's going to be pretty laggy for me because i'm recording right now but i will rotate this a bit something like this i will just rotate it play with the scale play with the location play with the color ramp maybe invert it uh, yeah and you know something like this now obviously I have made this already so I will not play with this one uh, I will just use the setup that I have right here uh, as you can see this is uh, how it's gonna look like if you play with this for a bit and now the last step for the texturing uh, I want to add some holes to this one this is gonna add so much more detail and so much more realism because usually the air ear cuffs have some holes in them so you will do this very easily you will just add a magic texture plug this one you can select your depth your scale customize it however you want but plug this one in the color ramp add a multiply uh you don't have to do this uh this is just my personal opinion um and connect it into a alpha but you cannot um, you cannot connect two two nodes into alpha so you have to bring a color mix into this one and mix these colors together and mix this one uh, set this one to factor and this is how it's gonna look like look like and now obviously uh, you want to use this uh, texture for this one as well so it makes sense and this is pretty much it for the texturing and the last step is uh, lighting now on to the fourth step i said there will be only three steps but here's a little quick tip and that is called lighting obviously you want to add some lighting to your scene otherwise it's just not gonna look good so in this one i don't have an hdri i just have one simple light uh, and i just moved it around to see what looks the best uh, nothing crazy play with the power uh, play with the intensity with the spread uh, scale it up scale it down and just experiment overall i think i spent like 10 to 15 minutes on this one and i came up with this lighting over here and i think this looks pretty much sick so like i said just experiment nothing crazy going on with lighting um and yeah this is pretty much it so this is pretty much it guys thanks you for watching i hope you got some value out of this one i just wanted to say uh that shout out to the guy that i mentioned earlier uh, make sure to check his channel he makes a lot of cool stuff in blender and without him this effect wouldn't be possible 
So make sure to check him out. If you have any more questions, just let me know down in the comments. I will explain them and answer them. And I hope I will see you in the next one. Peace.